Hi, Dr. Osborne here, and today I want to discuss a little bit about the problems with diagnosing gluten sensitivity. One of the most common tools used in a gastroenterology clinic for helping diagnose gluten problems is the intestinal biopsy. Unfortunately, this test, although used as a gold standard, should not be used as a gold standard. It's fraught with flaws. One of the problems with using the biopsy is that what we're actually doing is taking a microscopic sample of the small intestine. And the small intestine is uh, more than 20 feet long and when we take its entire surface area it's quite vast. So taking a biopsy is like taking several small samples of this very very large tissue and making the assumption from these small samples if they're normal that everything else is normal. The same analogy could be made uh, if we said we dipped a cup into the ocean and pulled out water without fish that we could say there's no fish in the ocean. So you can see there are a lot of flaws, at least in the biopsy, in terms of it being a comprehensive uh, breakdown of the entire small intestine. But many doctors use this test as a gold standard, so what does that leave somebody who has had a biopsy come back negative, yet they respond better by going on a gluten-free diet, yet their doctor tells them that they don't need to be on a gluten-free diet or their nutritionist or doctor tells them that it might be dangerous for them to follow a gluten-free diet. So it's important to understand that the biopsy is not a good indicator to discern or to determine whether or not a gluten-free diet is right for an individual. The other flaw in traditional laboratory testing comes in some of the serum tests that are performed. These tests measure certain types of antibodies. For example, uh, one of the tests that's used is called an anti-tissue transglutaminase test. And this particular test measures or is supposed to be specific for celiac disease damage to the small intestine. Unfortunately, it's not all that specific and it's not all that accurate, so in many patients we can get back false negative test results. So if we're using this type of serum blood test and we're combining it with a biopsy and they both have a great degree of flaws, then we have a lot of patients that slip through the diagnostic cracks and don't get properly diagnosed with gluten sensitivity. It's one of the reasons why I recommend genetic testing. Genetic testing doesn't tell us whether or not you're currently reacting to gluten, but it tells us your body's propensity to react to gluten. So in essence, if we look at gluten sensitivity not as a particular disease, but as a state of genetics, and when a person exposes their genetics to things that their body doesn't like, i.e. in this case gluten, then we end up having over a long period of time underlying biochemical inflammatory reactions that contribute to autoimmune disease and contribute to a host of chronic degenerative problems.